listening to Robert Elms on BBC London 94.9 FM and I've just been given a holy ball. I feel kind of honoured and, and slightly uplifted towards God um, because the man sitting opposite me has given me a football covered in pages of a holy Bible. Um, and I'm very glad he has. He's also given me a book telling me how to make holy balls, which is going to make my life even more replete. Um, because he is Samson Kambalu, and he's, well, artist, ethnomusicologist, and now author of a fascinating book entitled The Jive Talker, or How to Get a British Passport. Samson, welcome to BBC London. Ah, uh, thank you. Be before we turn to holy balls, as indeed we must, um, we must talk a little about your father and about your life, growing up in a country that, as you say, most people wouldn't be able to, to find on a map, um, which was Malawi, a small, very poor, landlocked African country. Um, Absolutely. Which sounds completely bonkers in your book. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who to, Malawi or me? Or uh, I don't know, actually. It's, uh, yeah, it is, uh, you know, yeah, it's the way it is. You know, the life expectancy in Malawi is like 34. Wow. Yeah, so I should be dead in two years. <laughs> you got two years left. Yeah, so I'm making the most of it. That's why I'm here. So. Except you did manage to leave Malawi. You did manage um, to kind of find a way out of it. But the book, although it does deal in, in, in a country that is very poor and does have terrible problems, is very funny um, and, and does kind of give an insight into growing up in a place that most of us can't even imagine, I guess. What made you want to write the book? Where did it come from? Um, it, it's basically in 2000. Um, that's when my mother passed, you know. So yeah. I, I was in the studio, and I, I didn't like being in the studio anymore. I couldn't do art. Uh, I didn't like doing art. I, I felt guilty, you know, doing art because I felt maybe if I had done something else, maybe have a job in the city, <laughs> learn lots of money. Yeah, absolutely. I could have kept my mom, my my mother alive. Are you serious? You felt very guilty about that. I really did. Yeah. And and writing the book is a process of trying to find art again, trying to be an artist again. Um, so I felt, yeah, if maybe I was doing something else, like you know, a proper job, then my mom, my mother still be alive. Because you were certainly groomed to have a proper job, weren't you? You you, you went to kind of the best school in, in, in Malawi, the Eton of Africa, as, yeah, absolutely. as it was described. Um, at, when you were living there with your father, and your father certainly sounds like a character as well, um, did it seem like a strange upbringing, or was that just how things were when you were there? It wasn't strange at all. You see, uh, parents of my father's generations, generation were not as... Uh, PC as people are these days, you know. <laughs> With my father, you went to school, you got an education, and you, you made something out of your life. So we just thought that's the way life was supposed to be. And once you got that education, were you always going to leave? Was that kind of what people do in Malawi if they do well? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You, well, it doesn't matter where you are, but you, there, there was, uh, you, you have to aspire, you know, make a difference for yourself, whether it was in Malawi or elsewhere. But could you have been an artist, for example, in Malawi? Does that exist? Yes, I would have. But then, uh, you know, um, it's, there's a world there, but it's more for tourists, you know. So you paint elephant, hippos, and stuff like that, because tourists like stuff like that. So I would have had to do that. But then the good thing about working here as an artist is that I can experiment as well. I can, I can, um, you know, do real art if you like. Uh, um, so yeah, there was. I think since I went to to school where the, we studied art, I, I think I, it was possible for me to, to become an artist. What about the ethnomusicology? Where did that come from? Yeah, the ethnomusicology. I, I just studied it so I could go to America. <laughs> really? It was just a way to get. Absolutely, four years I spent on ethnomusicology, and I didn't care. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to get to America. Uh, my plan was like it because. Um, Why did you think that that summer they particularly appealed? Because all the connections uh, with blues and all of that sort know, of stuff. Because there was a, an American professor there. He used to send all these students to America, so I studied. So so he could send me there, and there I planned to switch to to fine art in America. You know, at Chicago Institute of the Arts, be like Jeff Koons. You know, right. So. Um, well, did and you have why. access to all so of this? Double major. But I can play music too. <laughs> did you have access to <laughs> all of this stuff in Malawi? Yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, you do. Um, sometimes you get them a year later. Right. Like, it takes your time. It takes time to get them, but you get them eventually. I mean, my, my generation, we grew up with things. I've supported Chelsea, for instance, since I was in. You fool! You should have supported Queen's Park Rangers! <laughs> no. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that would have made my father a little happy. But no, Chelsea from, from, from childhood. And, and you get these things now. I think the world is becoming smaller and smaller, at least for my generation. So, um, um, yeah, we... we uh, yeah. When, when you first arrived here in Britain, was it the sort of artistic promised wonderland that you you'd hoped for or? yeah absolutely I, this is normal to art we know that it, it, during in Italy you all wanted to go to Rome or Florence yeah a and we know Picasso didn't work in Spain he worked in in, in Paris and, and in, you know in America you have to go to New York uh, and all was born in Pittsburgh get to move to New York so it was normal for me to think that if, when I become an artist I'd like to work maybe in London or, or New York or Paris or so it was um, kind of something that was you know you, you go where if you want to play for Chelsea you go play for Chelsea you, you Liverpool you go to Liverpool I, and so the, yeah we being an artist uh, I looked at the world that way so and but you, as you say you've always loved football so is that where holy balls came from yeah I was very good at making rag balls in, in Africa you know where you make balls out of rags to play with yeah absolutely I was very good at that although I was not really that good playing but <laughs> and I, I used to be featured in the best teams because I was the ball maker so um, so that's where it came from as you can see the wrapping of pages around the football pages from a holy bible absolutely in the same process you know it was very when when i grew out of my um you know christian upbringing of faith if you like yeah uh, it was normal for me to eventually turn my bible into a holy ball it, for me it's an evolution it, it's you a, see someone screams you a blasphemy surely back home in no, malawi no, I, I, yeah, absolutely. But uh, for me, it's stepping beyond. I, I don't see the Holy Bull as a kind of uh, um, anything blasphemous. I see it as a stepping beyond, uh, as, as, as you know, as part of my development as a as I mean, person. The book's very funny, but there's also some serious stuff because your your country did have one of, a dreadful tyrant ruling it, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we didn't think it was a dreadful though. To be honest with you, we no? thought it was great. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because. In Malawi, it's like there was wars in Mozambique, Angola, South Africa, and we thought when he, if you could get rid of some of these type of, of these dissidents, then we won't have a civil war. So we thought it was great because if he didn't, then we'd have a civil war. So we didn't want it to be like um, like that. So it was good to 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 nip the the problem in the bud, if you like. Well, it's a fascinating look into a very, very different world. It's by Samson Kambalu, artist, and even, against all his wishes, ethnomusicologist, creator of the Holy Ball, and author of the Jive Talker, or How to Get a British Passport. Did you get a British Passport? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm totally illegal now. Well done, that man. Ah, thank you.